Have you read the historical critical introduction to the philosophy of mythology by Schelling? Okay. Um, in this video, I want to discuss the upcoming year. The upcoming year for me on YouTube, what I plan to do, and in particular, I will go through 20 books uh, that are going to influence me and also the direction and content of this channel. All in all, of course, I will stick to the, the, the topics uh, that I have already presented in the past. Like, you know, this is sort of this blur between um, formal logic, a little bit of programming, computer science, you might call it, um, and some pure math uh, and physics, trying to be a little bit more in depth uh, than the other YouTube channels. Um, it's not very good to build audience, but I, uh, this is what I want to do. I want to build an audience that engages and works a little bit with me. So, um, before we, uh, before I kind of go through these books, most of which are also recommendations, of course, some of which I have not read, but um, I'm uh, convinced enough that they will be nice. Before I do that, I want to sort of speak about my uh, resolutions as they relate to this channel. Um, one thing I will do is I will truly make one two videos on uh, this little thing here, a small like 100 euro drone. There is some Indian YouTube channel that will make a sort of course on that and it has Python bindings and uh, whether or not the, the, the course is giving me what I want, um, I will definitely you know, try to take some of the math and physics and bring it to real, real world so an object moving in space and that will be among other things this sort of drone, right? You can get a lot of like mechanics out of that. I will try to overcomplicate it and connect it to, I don't know. Uh, the, some small uh, low dimensional Lie algebras. Um, you can imagine roughly in which direction that will go. So that's one thing. Another thing I will do like real world Thing in, I will do in this year is I want to start gardening. Uh, yes, you have correctly. I want to like see some plants grow. And uh, one book uh, out of this list here will also go in that direction, actually. So um, then you know I want to pick up uh, sport more regularly. I've basically done almost nothing this year. And then there is some uh, uh, work-related uh, topic, but that's probably not so interesting to you, right? I do computer vision for a living. And um, there are two things that are, however, uh, more relevant for this YouTube channel is firstly, streaming, right? So in the last, I don't know, six weeks or so, I already did a lot of streams. I started to go online at six my time. So that's, I think, uh, 17 p.m. London time. And I want to keep up with that. I want to like, keep it up. Um, I want to, on weekdays, go online and basically, since I'm in home office anyway, right, I will stream my, my reading. And as I already started in the last weeks, I want to make it more interactive in the way that we will choose a text, some more or less uh, simple paper or blog, on some of the topics I do on this channel. So it will be uh, math, physics for the most part, maybe some computer science, maybe some foundations, philosophy. Um, and we will like pick a book. I, I want you guys to make recommendations as well. And then three hours into the stream, there will be the time when people can like discuss. So. I will keep on doing this Pomodoro uh, reading streams or studying streams, if you will, if you want to do something else, where I, uh, I go online at the same time, which is 6 in my time, 6 um, o'clock in the afternoon Berlin time. Um, and um, then work for 50 minutes, 10 minute break, 50 minutes, 10 minute break, 50 minutes, 10 minute break. And then there's, if there's enough people who want to discuss the thing that we're currently reading, there's going to be a discussion session. Okay, I want to start that. I will do that definitely in the next one, two months. And if it works, I will continue it. 
So one of my resolutions or my, my goals for the next year is that um, I, let's say in the optimal case, I think like having like 50 people watching a stream it will be a good number for you still being able to read all the comments and, and maybe, you know, 10 people uh, actively discussing the, the text regularly. We don't have to read the text, by the way, in, in, in three hours. Maybe uh, we stick with the paper, paper for a whole week or something like that. Um, but I want to get the, that number. That's sort of my, my, my goal with this sort of uh, project. I want to have like, and actually like some smart engaging community that dedicates some, some, some time and, and, and this forces me and other people also to actually read contemporary stuff. Right? So we're not get, getting just lost in the textbook theory, but also get to the contemporary theory, let's say. Um, so uh, these are my goals for that. Uh, secondly, you know, as some of you know, I have an old wiki up, which is very outdated. I have not updated it in six years, but I started you know, back in the days to put a bunch of my formal notes, formalization of mathematics online. And it the, the spans from, you know, really foundational stuff, set theory, axioms and whatnot. A um, bunch of category theory and then developing an, a little bit of analysis, linear algebra, up to physics applications, statistical physics, which is where I see myself. Um, and I want to kind of revamp that. But the second time around, I, um, you know, I learned a lot in these years, also how to, to manage this sort, of, this sort of structure of information. And I, it will also be... Uh, GitHub based. That's my plan. So I will bring these notes back and I, at the end of the year I want to do some formalizations there. What I want to get in is some co coherent definitions starting with constructive set theory axioms like let's say uh, CF, uh, CCF, CZF, C, CZ, CZF, constructive to middle frankly. Um, and Using that, talking about low dimensional Lie algebras over, over totally ordered fields, let's say. Um, the reals, if you will, or the uh, complex numbers. And I want to have that there, and I will connect it uh, informally for now with uh, physics applications. Whenever I hold this thing up, okay, this, this symbolizes physics, symbolizes rotations in space and, and force pulling things down, and, and Lagrangian mechanics. Um, so I will connect these things uh, also online. So that's that's enough for my resolutions. Now let's get into the book. Well, I got this more for a joke. I mean, I, I'm not sure if anybody can read that. <laughs> uh, although I would really like to, because um, you know, uh, Schelling living around roughly, I don't know, roughly Hegel's time. This like just a ballpark, like a French Revolution a little bit, after Kant, before Kierkegaard and Nietzsche. Uh, and I'm interested in the, uh, the idealisten, the idealists, I guess. Sorry for my uh, any pronunciation in this video, as always. Um, I'm interested in, in, in idealist ideas. I have some empiricist inclinations myself. Um, as some of you might know, I'm, I'm quite uh, anti-realist and that's where this is coming from. And um, I want to learn it better and, and, and at least in my head come up with sort of uh, like a coherent understanding of, of these things. Um, even if there's problems which cannot be solved in the end, but at least uh, being able to understand uh, my, own, my own thoughts on it. Um, so, I, this is not one of the books that I will read, I mean, maybe I will peek into it when I have the time, but I think this is not something you can actually read, it's like 700 pages and um, there are too many other things I have to consider, but I would be interested in the historically critical introduction to the philosophy of mythology by Schelling. Okay, but let's get real now. Um, the first uh, text that I am uh, already reading, and I've already read this book uh, 10 years ago, is by Brian C. Hall, Lie Groups, Lie Algebras and Representations, right? 
So of course, you know, if you say um, reading a math book, you don't read a math book like a novel. You probably don't read like every line once and from uh, cover to cover, but you live with the book. And um, you know, there are some maybe some twenty pages where you com continuously come back to them. Maybe you implement some things. Um, it's there is a certain process to reading a, a math book, a physics book, right? And um, the same is with all these the math books that I'm talking about here. When I say I read the book, um, then what this means depends on the book. Um, but, you know, this book, I already got this, I already read it, that I got it from the library back then in the first edition. This is the second one. Um, when I was studying in, I think, in my third or fourth year, I liked the book back then already. And, um, as you, some of you might know, there is a reading group going on in Discord. Uh, by the way, thanks uh, for uh, thank you, Largo. Shout out to the guy who's organizing it. Um, that where we go through some of the exercises here, and if you want to participate in that, if you want to read Lee Group Lee Algebra with me, then ask me in one of the streams for the Discord link, the invite link, and I might just. Uh, it, uh, invite you there. I will not talk about uh, Lee Algebra and Lee Groups in this video anymore. I do it enough on my channel, so let's try to uh, get through the texts. Okay, the second book is something I wished for this Christmas and I got it. Uh, it's a new biography of sorts uh, of Hegel. So, you know, this is this extremely influential German person, philosopher, and this is called Hegel's Welt by Kaube. Jürgen Kaube, Hegel's World. Hegel's world. Um, I think the name is a reference to Sophie's World, if you all know that book, which is like a very popular introduction to philosophy text. And um, this uh, sort of, like I, I started reading it the other day, I'm on page 20, um, it, it tries to sketch out the circumstances in which Hegel um, <laughs> was thrown into the world and, and developed his ideas. We'll not get much into it but uh, in this video, but uh, again, I'm interested in, like, apart from him being generally a super influential person in, in all the Western uh, philosophy that comes after him, or all philosophy really, um, and also because I'm interested in the history, especially about the time, especially about 18, you know, I think 1817 is when he was born. Uh, 187. Um, I, I I want to like clear cl clarify in my head his his idealism and see how it can be reconciled with some of the other funky ideas uh, down uh, the the list of books here and how they relate to my sort of conceptualizations of foundational questions uh, theoretical physics as well. Um, then the third book here is Generating Functionality by Wilf. I think this might be originally from, like, I think this is 50 years old at least, uh, but in its third edition. I started reading that um, a few years ago when, uh, like, I think this is also, it might be online as well, I'm not sure. Um, and this is a, it is about a, about uh, it is of course about generating functions. It is about uh, formal power series, power series, and um, for one, I uh, liked the book when I read it. it you know, the, the in generating functions have like some always surprising, like super strong uh, things which just pop out of this simple object. It's it's kind of a pleasure to like to to engage with that, and so, the, some of the you know. Formal manipulation um, tricks are developed in the text, but also these theorems, like they are sort of, they are sort of like the skeleton, the formal skeleton of also complex analysis, and a lot of the strong theorems can be proven in the, this context, right? I'm interested also in like um, formal power series <coughs> over over semi rings even, and and to see what can be proven in this context. Already and uh, like the the shadows of of, uh, of other theorems which might be stronger because they are like developed in a more topological context like 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 how this relates to complex analysis 
Um, but uh, needs less, so I, I'm certain if you do like, if I'm going to get a little bit more even into uh, constructive set theory, then you can pull up a lot of like as soon as you have smallest ordinals, you can speak about some of these things and develop theorems which are like complex analysis theorems, but in a much weaker context. And and I'm interested in that. Um, there are, by the way. Um, Free texts which I don't have in physical form. Like I have a bunch of books now here because recently, um, when during the third lockdown, I was like, uh, okay, I order a bunch of books. Some of them uh, are not obtainable. One of them is the book by Boyd called Quaternion Algebras, and I cannot buy it right now because it is not even published yet. It is online. It's a book on uh, Quaternion Algebras from a sort of arithmetic perspective, and you know, we will also talk about theta functions in the quaternions and, 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 and wild stuff like that. Um, but uh, I started reading it, it's, it's freely online, um, and I liked what I saw so far, so I will definitely get into that. And as it uh, relates, um, you know, the quaternion algebras, um, this general set among which also you have the Hamiltonian quaternion algebra, which is essentially the SEO2 Lie group. Um, the Lie algebra, it's the Lie algebra to the Lie group, and as such, it relates to rotation and uh, Lagrangian mechanics and, and this object here. Um, then uh, the next book on the list is the Molecular Mechanisms of Photosynthesis by Blankenship, and this. Of course, it's the book I talked about when I spoke about uh, gardening, about biology. Um, this is like a, this painful 300-page uh, like detailed uh, explanation of the current understanding of the uh, process of photosynthesis. You know, how, basically how photons interact with plants to give plants their, their energy, uh, together with some water. And, you know, the word of bio biology it's kind of it's it's much wilder than any the simple to describe simple mathematically describe um, physical toy models that you have here. Like if you just start to try and to understand what is involved in in the photosynthesis pro uh, process, it's absolutely crazy. Um, like the the sort of things you know what what the, the various molecules and how they like work together and which like spatial process needs to happen and, and, and all these layers, it's really crazy. Um, I'm interested in that because I want to do some gardening thing which is also will involve some data science aspects and statistics. But um, you know I, I have a background in, in chemistry to the extent that I did a PhD in plasma chemistry. It's more like I came at it more from a physics perspective but uh, I really like um, chemical reaction descriptions, chemical kinetics, and if you go one level lower, it also involves computing transition probabilities using quantum mechanics. Of course, it has to do with photons, so it has to do with quantum mechanics, right? So um, I, I I see this sort of everything is integrated, and if I look at the book explaining photosynthesis to biologists even, then this is for me in the same like corner like um, some fundamental quantum mechanics texts that I have here as well. This is all that com kind of comes together and I'm looking forward to that. I, st I started the reading already uh, since I'm like um, on yeah, page 15, um, but I think I, I should sort of try to understand that. Um, the next book is uh, on analytical mechanics, right? This is the, the classical mechanics extension, if you will, that also enables you to incorporate boundary conditions, some uh, making unphysical assumptions for the sake of simplifications, um, going into generalized coordinates and, and looking at uh, the and Bia principle and basically the classical mechanics of like Lagrange, Hamilton, and um, like Norting, the author of this book, uh, is also very fond of the transition from the 
Hamilton or Kobe theory to quantum mechanics and how the wave equations look similar and Poisson brackets and all these kind of things. This guy, Norting, is uh, an uh, adorable, in the sense that he can be adored, uh, uh, German phys physicist who has a series um, like of eight books ranging through the whole theoretical physics curriculum, basically undergrad and beginning graduate uh, physics books like, like Landau and I really like this series, it's not the only like German uh, physics book series I like. Often people ask me, hey can you recommend some book in, in physics and then I can only say these this sort of German books um, because I, uh, these are the, the best books on, on, on just physics that I, I know of, like of basic material anyhow. And um, I also usually don't want to recommend translations um, I, because I, I don't know them. I don't know if they're, uh, they are good. Um, and a good book in math and physics, it's not just, it's not just the theorems, it's also, it's also the heart, right? Um, it's also how it's written, how, how like, uh, how, like it, it's about life, right? Um, so I've already started that. I'm, I'm even not, like I'm already on page 100 it seems. Um, skipping some exercises for now, and um, yeah, it's it's uh, the quantum mechanics, which is just beautiful, and so this is a good book on on the subject. Um, even if you you know if you don't have the full differential geometric background, and I think almost nobody does, um, then there are some things in the physics presentation which are very ad hoc and very difficult to like. Um, but if you figure out which which where the problems lie, or where you know, oh, this should be formalized as uh, I don't know <laughs> the cohomology of the cotangent space, blah 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 blah. If you uh, if you know where the the weak, weaker points are and you can look over that, then apart from that, these books are like super solid, and this is one of them, and I recommend it. I recommend the whole series, and I, I bought the this this is the, the second one in the series, the first one being on classical mechanics. I have the se seventh one here as well. I also like the sixth one, which is statistical mechanics. But okay, so the the next book is again not not a physics or math book. It's called Eine Weltgeschichte der deutschsprachigen Literatur von Richter, Sandra Richter, translating um, a world history of German speaking literature. And as the title says, it's about the German literature going back to the basically the 1500s and speaking about the, it in the context of the world in the sense how it influenced later works by German authors but also how it was received by other countries. So this book will talk about oh there is this this old book in the 1600s and then uh, this was like rewritten by those or they made like spin-offs and then this Norwegian theater um, like they played it in, in free versions and it's like it's a history book right it's about German literature but what I was going to say is that sadly I don't read many like novels I dedicate myself to math, physics, maybe computer science, logic, foundations, philosophy, history uh, but with this history book at least I can you know read about the novels and maybe I find out which one I want to make sure actually the time for the room to actually read them. So uh, I started this and I'm looking forward to continuing. The next book is called Foundations of Quantum Theory from Classical Concepts to Operator Algebras by Lanzmann. I discovered this book um, when I was researching the cohomology theory of the um, Galilean group, right, the classical Poincaré group if you will, um, because I'm interested in, you know, Rotations and acceleration IMUs as you find them uh, built into these sort of devices, for example, um, also relevant to my work. And uh, this talks a little bit about the cohomology, but uh, I didn't find out I was surprised. This also talks about quantum logic, it has a little bit on toposphere in physics as well, although that's not mainstream at all. Uh, and this is one of these opinionated um, foundations books. So, this is like that. Um, the subject is mathematical physics as opposed to theoretical physics, right? So it talks about rigorous C star algebra theorems, 
and ties them to physical theorems. But it also has like an, an angle to it, a philosophical angle or a, a quantum interpretation sort of angle. It wants to make a point. Similar to this book is not on my list this year, but um, Neumeyer Coherent Quantum Physics is also like a 200 page book basically dedicated to, to make a point. Um, not going to discuss uh, which points in, in detail in uh, this video at all, but um, suffice to say, I, I started with it, I'm on page 25, and I like it so far. It discusses both classical and quantum mechanics from this uh, sort of algebra um, angle and wants to work out how they are different or the same. And um, very interesting. There's also another, this is, you know, this is thousand pages and half of it is like an, an uh, appendix about um, operator and uh, functional analysis uh, theorems. There's also another book, also a blue thousand page book on uh, quantum foundations by Moretti called Spectral Theory and Quantum Mechanics that I might also eventually uh, get my hands on. Um, Moretti is somebody who is findable on the internet, like he answers some questions on at least on um, uh, physics tech exchange, a professor from Italy or so, which also has uh, like works out like very mathematically formal some uh, basic quantum mechanics uh, concepts. So not quantum field theory, but um, looking forward to that. Um, then uh, the, the next book is also a um, more philosophically inclined book, but uh, even more far out. It's in speculative philosophy, or as it was called, cosmology, not to be confused with the physics subject. Whitehead's Process and Reality. This is like Infinite Chest and some other books here, <laughs> uh, a lit meme, really, but I'm also generally interested in it. So Whitehead is the guy who co-authored with uh, Russell, the Principia, 120 years ago, you know, the, the guy from the Sefiri Paradoxes, this guy. Um, but uh, this is uh, metaphysics, it's about, um, like, why it uh, promotes process philosophy, which is, an, uh, you know, don't want to say anything wrong here, but basically an ontology that has change in process as primary objects of study and uh, philosophical uh, base notion as opposed to objects, right? So there, in his ontology, you know, what exists, um, it's not the things that are subject to change, but the, the main objects are the change. And so it's, uh, it's, it's much more like, it's uh, speculative and it's, there's no map in this book, obviously. It's also an old book, um, but um, since some of these ideas appear natural, right? If you, like, there's also, like, there's even mathematician, mathematicians which are very inspired by the idea of making the, giving prime focus to relations and not too much the objects in themselves and so on. Um, and while I have this sort of, you know, I have this sort of very anti-realist physics philosophy and empiricist in some sense, and but but be, because I'm coming from that sort of angle, I I'm curious about idealism and also these sort of things. Okay. Um, it's going to be a tricky one to read. I think it's going to be very hard, um, <laughs> harder than math book because in a math book you at least you you, you have an idea when you when you understand something, um, you you know when you got it to some extent. Um, but this is, this is more like a, an idea finding thing for me, and that's why I'm looking forward to that. Even if I might not actually tackle it properly in this year. The last book on my, uh, like, completes the first 10 books. The first 10 books are those which, like, will influence um, what I'm genuinely studying, studying, trying to understand. And this book is a book that I sort of already read uh, and I've just found to be a very nice book called Optimal State Estimation by Dan Simon. Um, so this is about, uh, it's basically applied math and is about Bayesian updating models for something like 
simultaneous localization and mapping. In that way, it also um, relates to to this drone here. Although I had to do with that at work um, for not flying objects, but just other like camera guided um, uh, like phone and, and anything that can have an IMU. Originally, these things are were developed, I think, mostly by the NASA to to navigate satellites. That's where a lot of this math, this very applied math, comes from. Um, but this book is so nicely written that it, I, I don't even want to call it an applied math book, even if it is, because it's just the 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 sort of the probability theory, linear algebra, and algorithms are presented in such a like, clear, like exploratory way that it's also like. A, you could you could sort of view it as a, a pure math book on an, a subject which is ma ma mostly applied, if that makes any sense. Um, going on, uh, I learned that there are people who don't know who Goethe is. You know, in the in the Lee group, Lee algebra Discord, uh, I found uh, some of these creatures who have never heard of Goethe, but I want to read uh, Faust, right? So. Um, Goethe is, of course, super influential uh, author in German. This book is a famous book on a guy making this pact with Mephisto, with the devil, um, to gain knowledge and sell his soul for it. And I know that I'm going to like that. So <laughs> let's leave it at that. Um, as I said, I want to go back to do more regularly, like working out and. Uh, for that sake, I will go back to a book which I also got from a brother years ago. Um, I mean, the title doesn't matter so much here. This is an, actually by uh, an Austrian company or an Austrian guy. Intelligent Strength this is called, and the book is called Human Movements, Upper Body Push. Um, and it's a book with, uh, with weightlifting ex exercises and so on. Um, so, I... I uh, I have this in my shelf for far too long and I, when I started working out in, I don't know, 2013 or so, I was really like going by a book. It's not my only like um, weightlifting book actually. Um, but I will have it top row of my shelf to really get back into it and, and uh, use it to organize my routine. Um, the next book is one I have no idea about what it's about. Um, it's the book Norwegian Wood uh, by Murakami. There's so many people who like that, so I eventually picked it up. Uh, it's a 400 page novel. Um, I cannot say anything about it because I don't even know what it's about, but uh, let's see. Um, th this is a book which is extremely pretty, although I don't actually like it too much. It's uh, called Ideen Suchen. It's about how to find ideas. However, I later discovered that it's kind of written from an entrepreneur angle and not so much for the sort of ideas I want to find, like if I try to prove theorems and stuff like that. Um, and uh, nevertheless, it's on my list because I started it. I'm on page 100 and I, won't, I will finish it because it's, it's yeah, an easy read and um, it's, it's a very pretty sort of text. Maybe, maybe it helps me a little bit, but uh, I, I, one of these books that I is just on my list because I really want to finish it and I'm already like one third through. Um, then something <clears throat> which is also not in the first ten books because I might not get actually to it in uh, like properly this year. It might be only a 2022 book. It's Understanding Markov Chains by Ribo. So I um, I got this from the library in the first edition. Uh, two or three years ago, and you no, know, I really adore like Markov chains as mathematical objects. I think they're like really nice, um, and in the ways you can describe them and so on. And I like that book especially because there are some examples which are not completely trivial, but like uh, meticulously like discussed here in very uh, much detail. Um, and so eventually, I was like, yeah, I, I, I'm actually going to buy that book because um, I liked what I what I got out of the first sixty pages or so. Um, however, it's not on my list uh, for uh, like the top 10 list for next year because there are a lot of concepts that I want to develop or uh, foster my understanding better before I get to it and I have a lot of other things uh, to do in my head anyway. Uh, so, you, of course you need 
for stochastic processes, strong analysis, and um, I will, um, apart from the fact that something like um, optimal state estimation already uses some of these contents tangent to that or related to that, this is something I definitely want to get back to, but maybe not this year. Um, no, if I already mentioned it, this guy also has a book on probability theory on the algebras, which sounds very funky. Um, then uh, we already had a Nolting book, right? Nolting, this is this uh, dashing looking German guy who made a series on uh, on the standard undergrad and also graduate uh, theoretical concepts. I also, like when I got the second one, the analytical mechanics one, I also got the seventh one, which is on many particle theory. This is also very low down my list because it's, it's essentially quantum field theory for uh, condensed matter and is therefore very involved. It's, you know, I see myself in the statistical physics corner, so that's really my thing, but um, I'm much more on the Lagrange mechanics, classic mechanics train at the moment. So I, I don't. I, I will peek into it if I find the time. I like um, finite temperature, uh, quantum field theory sort of math, and I find it appealing. Um, and I, I worked for companies who did sort of solid state stuff where this is at least tangent, tangentially relevant. But uh, I just because I have other properties, this is going to be sort of moved temporarily into next year or later. And uh, uh, last but not least, or maybe least, I don't know, <laughs> is, is a more private thing. Uh, it's called Die Fuche von uh, Slavikovic and this is, I'm reading, I'm reading this because it is actually written by a long deceased uh, relative of mine, by I think the grandfather of my father or something like that. My mother gave it to me two years ago for Christmas. Um, for that reason, because it's like in the family, it's, I think it's like a humorous rendition of Austrian history 200, 100 years ago. I started reading it. I, I uh, was already laughing because it's nicely written. So I'm also looking forward to that. Um, it's more of a private thing. I will not talk uh, in more detail about it. Um, but um, so that's that's pretty much it. There are of course like a lot of other books will pop up, and that I will start being interested in. I might read them. Um, this is just what I already know. What I'm interested in. There are some books which are not in the list because some books don't exist, as I mentioned. Uh, there's also the constructive set theory book draft online, which is. Uh, likely not ever going to make it into a book, but I've already used a lot in the last two years. That's constructive set theory book draft by uh, Ratjen, or Ratjen, I'm not sure how to pronounce him. This is the guy who is alive. The other guy already deceased, Astel, who is, um, did a lot of like, fun, uh, like uh, set theory um, stuff in his in, in his days um, don't find him just in constructive set theory but uh, this book will also be used as I already did in the last two years because it's uh, simply a great reference on the constructive set theory which kind of underlies some of the things that I eventually want to put onto this website right um, okay and that, that completes uh, my my informal uh, to-do list this will shape the things that I want to discuss um, this but not only this uh, but if you like, uh, maybe you're motivated to look in any of these. These are certainly topics where I am then happy to uh, engage with you because I'm also reading these texts. Um, speaking of which, uh, again, I, in the last, uh, in the next months, I will, um, as I've already done in the last month, try and foster a sort of paper reading community, or at least a space where you can can do that, or even read or work on whatever you want. I will go online work days um, from um, 17 p.m. London time. And if you have any wishes what you want to see discussed here, just tell me. Please make recommendations. Um, can be some paper 
preferably not too specific or hard. Um, can also be an opinion piece, can any, be any block or something like that. I'm looking really forward to assembling, let's say, something between 10 and uh, 50 regular viewers there. Um, also, if you see this <coughs> the stream and you jump in, uh, say hello. Uh, it helps uh, exposure and help YouTube um, show it around, give it a like. And yeah, I, I hope that was informative. I might uh, do that sort of, I might do a reflection at the end of the next year and uh, another uh, such video for 2022 and, and see where it gets me. Take care.